Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at uh, the Kaggle Housewife predictions, advanced regression techniques, uh, competition, and how I got to uh, where I am. And uh, it will load soon enough. So basically, Kaggle recommends us to use either gradient descent, uh, gradient. Uh, sorry, I mean uh, ra random forests so, or uh extreme uh xd boost uh, library so i i i uh, chose to use the xd boost uh, library rather than the random forest and if we look at the the gradient boosting algorithm versus uh, the linear regression this is how we could picture it so the linear regression would be something like a small car and the gradient boosting algorithm is something like a fully armed chop chopper so gradient boosting algorithm is way more advanced and uh, so yeah like what i said they re recommend random forests and gradient boosting and i have opted to use gradient boosting so the reason being that gradient boosting algorithm is good for large data sets uh, with large uh, irregular data so my submission at the time of submission i was 1296 but i have gone up on the leaderboard to the 1274 and mm -hmm, let me quickly walk you through what i did here and uh, along the way i'll explain uh, what gradient boosting algorithms are good for so forth so to begin with we just import our data sets and by the way this is how my directory is structured we have two folders the in data and the out data folder so in the in data folder we have our input data sets and in the output data folder we have a sample submission so based on that we'll be generating uh, our results so initially we 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 import the data sets into our workspace and then we uh, and um, by them using the r language rather than python so by uh, afterwards what we do is we get the dimensions of the matrix matrices and uh, this is what we end up with and finally we use the str function which is similar to the summary function except for the fact that it gives row wise uh, summary and by this uh, by running this we come to know that there are some in not typical not applicable values the variable uh, rather the data set that needs to be refined both in the training and the test data set so next thing we do is we we run some level functions and just to know that where our data stands and it seems like there are a lot of irregular data which needs to be refined so afterwards what we do is we import the data sets with strings as factors set to false then what we do is we set the train sale price to null and now we need to do an operation on the whole data set meaning both training and test data so it would be easier if we could combine it so what we are doing here is we are combining it and now what we are doing is uh, we are going to do an operation on the whole uh, so here we are combining it and and here we are filling the the places where they are uh, like uh, missing characters will be um, uh, filled in with this string missing so and then what we do is we we train our data so rather sorry we we split the data back into the train and the test data sets uh, because we are done with all the operations on the entire train plus uh, test data set so afterwards what we do is we just run a summary function and we get this tabular format output uh, output rather then what we got in the str function earlier where it was row wise and now we have some tabular data for each uh, input feature and now what we are doing here is we are filling the 
empty numeric values that are uh, n a not applicable with uh, minus one now not all of our input features would have a strong correlation with the output feature which is the sale price so what we are doing here is uh, finding the correlation between the variable the target variable and the other input features by the way the code will be already provided to you so I'm, i'll be quickly running through this and hope you can follow along so once we do that we come to know that the overall quality is the one that is highly correlated and these are some of the input features that are highly correlated so and now we are doing the total opposite of it we are finding which are the variables that have the least correlation finally what we are doing here is we are finding the correlation between two individual input features and finding how strongly related they are okay and now what we do here is we are plotting some graphs which are visible on your plot section in the R studio you can literally go through it once you generate them so it has a couple of graphs for some reason if it's not yeah it has a couple of graphs in here you could check it on your own pace so basically what we came to know from these graphs are give me a second while I load my document on so basically as far as I can remember what we came through came to know on the graphs are like most of the graphs are closer to zero in terms uh, it's like densely towards the zero and the sale price is fairly normal uh, and uh, rooms are sold more in summer and winter sorry rather summer and spring rather than winter so based on that information we get a little bit of intuition a little bit of idea as to what we are looking at here and so what we do here is now we are creating few new variables yeah and that's how the graphs are you can literally go through them so yeah we are we are creating some input features based on the features that are there already there so we are creating a variable called the total square footage using these two variables and we're creating the total number of bathrooms based on these variables and another thing that was revealed is uh, when we found out that the about the least correlated features we found that id the id feature doesn't have any relationship with the final outcome the predicted outcome so intuitively that should be the case so what we are doing is we are setting the id to null because that is useless when it comes to predicting the the price of a house doesn't depend on the id in simple terms so now what we're doing here is we are just importing some libraries that are needed to do the prediction so whatever that's done before this is like the data pre-processing what we're doing here is from here this point onwards is uh, related to the predicting so we yeah, are we are importing this library which is called carrot which is classification regression and training uh, and these like uh, these libraries and you can go through the comments literally so we have xdbooks library which uh, provides the functionality for extreme gradient boost trees so uh, and by the way if you don't have some of these libraries installed you can easily go and from the tools menu select the install packages and install the the missing libraries that you don't have right now so what i have done here is I have defined a custom library, uh, custom summary function, and then I have used some uh, cross validation to validate uh, results. So we have folded five folds. We are folding the data set into five, the parsing it into five, and select the sum to do the cross validation. And these are some of the 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 parameters that I changed 
so I have given a range of 1000, 1200, 1500 for the number of rounds, max step is 6, 8 and 10. Ignore these comments, they might be a little different from what are here because I actually been changing the variables constantly. So test uh, 3 values for boosting rounds, test 3 values for 3 depth, test 2 values for learning rate should be the ideal uh, set of com comments. So these are the factors that I have changed, these three plus the ones in here, uh, the gamma and the one in here, which is subsample. So the ETA is like the analogous to the learning rate in other algorithms and pretty much everything else is self-explanatory and the number of rounds here. In the gradient boosting, we have a feel on each round, each iteration, it tries to reduce the error and improve uh, the prediction however like it doesn't always be the case so if, if you like give another, another number beyond 1500 maybe you will end up with something worse so basically uh like we i have already run the uh, tested this uh i've already tested this uh with these parameters uh, what could be a likely outcome uh, but when you are going to test it it's going to take a while to do this it's going to take like 15 to 20 minutes so don't worry about that so once you are done it takes 15 20 to 20 minutes to run this part right here and then once you're done you can run this to get the results so for the range that you provided these are the the results that you get and uh, for the each learning rate each max depth uh, combination we get our uh, error rate right here on right there so what we can do is uh, easily so suppose we have a larger result set we can easily uh, view the best result by uh, issuing this command and it will show us which is which are the ideal most ideal uh, parameters to use so let's use those parameters to do our prediction so now what we're doing here is we are getting the most top 20 the top 20 uh, important features then we could run we could run these uh, commands to sorry uh, we could run those commands to uh, do the prediction and generate uh, a csv file similar to the similar to the uh, submission file that we sample submission file that's given by Kaggle uh, and then we could submit it to Kaggle right here like that so I'm waiting for the R studio to respond it seems like it's taking a quite some time so I'm gonna pause this video and come back once it starts to respond again sorry about that oh seems like I got lucky it's already given us the 20 most important variables and what we're going to do now is you're going to run, test the predictions and by the way the document might have all these all the last four commands uh, together and it would give you an error if you run them all together so you need to like separate it into four lines and run them separately so this one here it was together I just split it up into four lines that's how you could run it otherwise it will cause you some trouble again make sure that the directory that you refer to here is correct otherwise it would cause another error so we are done and here is our results based on the parameters that we've given so once we upload this file into Kaggle, it would generate, it would calculate uh, the root mean squared and uh, find how well we did here. So 
when I saw, so I was supposed to, I was assuming that I would get uh, 0.125 as we got in here by the prediction, uh, like uh, when we checked for the ranges. But however, we ended up something a little bit uh, more, a little uh, the error was a bit more than expected. So. I hope uh, like you would also may have to expect that uh, when you're submitting it to Kaggle. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you later.